Hello, good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Business News here on Media Live. My name is Alfred the Council. Let's go on to our first story this afternoon. And a report by the Public Agenda newspaper has revealed that over 90% of the meters imported by the ECG were not calibrated to international and local standards. Now, these revelations come amidst widespread complaints from customers using postpaid and prepaid meters who say they are being overcharged. The complaints compel the PRC to direct the electricity company of Ghana to suspend the implementation of their new billing software until further notice. Campaign coordinator at the Integrated Social Development Center, ISODA, Dr. Steve Mantel, uh, has been doing some work on this and uh, he's joined me on the telephone now. Let's see if uh, Dr. Mantel, if you can hear me, good afternoon to you. And uh, so what, what are the implications on our billing system if almost all members, uh, the, the meters, I must say, imported into the country are not calibrated? Hello, Dr. Steve Montel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. I thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I'm finding out. So what are the implications on our billing system if almost all meters imported into the country are not calibrated? Per your findings, as you say, about 90% of those. Well, um, the implications are pretty simple. What it means is that you and I may be paying more than we actually consume in terms of electricity, or we could be paying far less. So I'm pretty sure that there are many consumers who are paying less than they consume, and there are those who are paying more than they consume. That's why it simply means. I see. So, but for how long have you been doing this search that has come well, to the conclusion um, that 190%? Well, the issue of calibration is something that is dear to the heart of the public agenda, and for that matter, also I select because. We think that in all these things, um, consumers' interest needs to be protected. And when we establish regulatory bodies, we expect them to act to protect consumers from uh, maybe being shortchanged in terms of the billing, but also in terms of quality of the product they consume. Now, what we find is that um, largely there are many people who have gotten involved in the business of importing meters into this country. No, one cannot be too sure where these meters are coming from and the competency of the agencies or the institutions that are manufacturing these meters, right. which is the more reason once they arrive in the country, they need to be subjected to third parties. And we have a statutory body, the standards authority in this country, to be able to calibrate these meters to ensure that they read accurately. I mean, calibration is something akin to um, maybe when you buy a watch, Mm -hmm. We all set our watch to a certain standard, the GMT, the Greenwich Mean Time. Right. So that all watches in this country read the same time at the same time. That is to say that they read accurately relative to the Greenwich Mean Time. That is what calibration is. So there's a common reference point standard where you set all these equipments to okay. so that they all read accurately. This right. we don't do. And so there is a likelihood that Either the ECG is being shortchanged or consumers are being shortchanged. No. But to the extent that the ECG says that it has a laboratory yes. where it calibrates... I, I was just coming to that. Own. Yeah. For me, that is even more dangerous. Then it means that the ECG could be shortchanging um, consumers. Because nobody is sure whether they are calibrating them in a way that reads accurately or in a, re a way that reads too much than the consumers actually consume. And therefore making consumers pay more than they actually consume. No, because if you speak to the ECG, they say they calibrate. Now, if pay with your findings is anything to go by, then clearly uh, the, 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 the deduc deduction you're making is, 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 is you know, logic because it means that the, then the ECG is on a path of, as it were, having people pay more than what they're supposed to pay. So who do we hold responsible for this? And how do we solve what you have identified? Oh, well, these findings really is a, a, a points to a huge regulatory failure, and the corporate here is the PURC. Somehow, the PURC has become obsessed with regulating tariffs. They are more interested in the money base and not really interested in the quality and ensuring that consumers are protected against unscrupulous companies. I'm not saying that the ECG is unscrupulous in this case, but then there could mm. be some kind of underhand dealings 
that is leading to shortchanging consumers. And so the PRC, the regulator, is the one to blame. It is their mandate to ensure that all meters that are installed on the premises of consumers right. are calibrated. In fact, the mm. National Petroleum Authority does this beautifully. Yes, okay. we do have concerns about petroleum pricing in this country. Yeah. But one thing that I admire the National Petroleum Authority is that every year, after the Standard Authority has calibrated all the filling po uh, station pumps, the, the NPA goes around to ensure sure. compliance. Yes. They can inspect and make sure that you have a Standard Authority sticker with a date showing when your equipment was calibrated and when the calibration, next calibration is due. Okay. And so this way you ensure that when you're buying fuel at the pumps, you're getting the right the, quantity. Th th that's and right. this is what the PRC has to do, quite okay. apart from fixing tariffs. Okay. Dr. Mantea, I thank you very much for this. And uh, we'll welcome. stay a bit on this. Grateful. Dr. Steve Mantea is the editor of the Public Agenda newspaper and also uh, with the Integrated Social Development Center, ISODEC National Coordinator. But away from that, the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index went down 2.65 points to close the week at a year to date loss of 11.12%. Total capitalization of listed companies stood at 54.3 billion Ghana CDs. Total traded shares went down by 87% following the exchange of 733,592 shares, which was valued at 957,972 cities, a decrease of 91.15% compared to last week. Ecobank Ghana Limited recorded both the highest traded shares and the largest traded value in the week after contributing 14% of total traded shares, which was valued at 647,899 cities, representing 68%. Gainers for the week were Standard Chartered Bank, appreciating by 5.80% in value, and Fan Milk by 0.68%. One thing that hits uh, standards is very large right of, of loans and we think that uh, going forward if they're able to collect those loans back it will impact positively their books and it may bring investor uh, confidence back to the equity. Losers for the week were SIC losing 6.67% of its value, Total Ghana minus 4.90%, Ecobank Ghana minus 4.35%, Carbank minus 1.25% and GCB Bank minus 0.66%. There was a judgment debt against Ecobank of uh, about $231,000 and it's likely this could have impacted uh, negatively on their price uh, for the week. This is the biggest bank by assets in Ghana and I believe that um, this will not impact them too, too, too hardly and they are likely to come back. That's it for business this afternoon.